today we're going to have a look at Zigbee Networks and explore some tips and tricks on how to improve your smart home Zigbee Network for better performance and reliability. I've been running my Zigbee Network for the last two years using the Sonoff Zigbee USB stick. I run ZHA and have not yet moved over to Zigbee to MQTT or reflash the device. Over time, some of my battery powered devices like window and door and motion sensors started becoming unavailable. Recently, IT was kind enough to send me the latest version of this device to help me in improving my network. As well as replacing my Zigbee radio, I'll also be looking at other ways to assess and improve my network. For those of you new to home automation, Zigbee is a wireless communication protocol designed for low bandwidth applications like sensors and can allow devices to run on a button battery for one year or even more. It creates a mesh network, allowing devices to communicate with the nearest power device or router, such as a smart plug or light bulb, which then connects to the Zigbee coordinator. One of the key factors affecting your Zigbee network's performance is the placement of your devices. Make sure your Zigbee devices are strategically placed throughout your home. Avoid placing them too far away from the closest router. This ensures a robust network with multiple communication paths. So in order to see a visualization of our Zigbee network, we go to Settings, Devices and Services, scroll down to our Zigbee Home Automation, go to Configuration, and here we can go to Visualization. Now, if you look at this network, you can see we've got squares, donating our co coordinator. From there, we've got these ovals. So these ovals are our Zigbee powered devices which are operating as routers. Then we have these round ones. These are the end devices. And these would be things like, this for example is my Yale front door lock. So that's running off batteries. Now, if we want to see the connection strength, we can see that these lines over here have got different colors. So green would be a really good connection, Red would be rather a poor connection. It also has these numbers from 0 to 255. So over 200 is showing as green, 160 yellow, and 96 or 97 as red. Now, ideally, these different end devices should be connected to the closest router to them in the same room, for example. Yeah. So in order to connect it to its own specific router, what we do is devices and services again, go to our devices, and what we do then is we select the router that we would like to use. So let's say, for example, we'll use this light bulb. And what I do now is I click on these three dots and I go add device via this device. What it will now do is search for the device and it will add it to that specific router in the room, which is as close to that one as possible. My Aquara devices have had issues connecting and staying connected. Apparently they only work with certain devices as routers. After reading the forums, many people say that the IKEA Tradfi plugs are confirmed to work. So I will be ordering a few of these and trying them out. Interference can also negatively impact your Zigbee network. Keep electronic devices like Wi-Fi routers away from your Zigbee devices. These can operate on similar frequencies and cause interference. If possible, choose Zigbee channels with less interference on your area. I've included a link in the description of the video explaining the different channels and how you can avoid them. Migrating your Zigbee devices over to a new network can be quite a big job, especially if you've got many, many devices. There is a button in Home Assistant offering migration or backup, but it didn't seem to work for me. I've included a link in the description below to Lewis's video showing a detailed description of exactly how to migrate your Zigbee network. I decided instead to delete my old network and start from scratch. The Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 USB Dongle Plus is a really affordable option when choosing a Zigbee radio and comes in a smaller aluminium case than the earlier model I had. It also includes an external antenna. It's always a good idea to use a USB extension cable for two reasons. Firstly, it cuts out the chance of radio signal interference from the Pi, as well as limiting the access to other USB sockets on your Pi. 
After upgrading my Zigbee coordinator and following the steps to plan my network, I'm happy to say that I have a much stronger network. Please let me know in the comments below if you've got any other good Zigbee tips and tricks. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that you'll get an update when I upload up new videos.